What's up guys, welcome back to Crypto Weekly Review, home of the Wolfpack, your number one source of cryptotainment to get you through the bear market. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the trend line that could reverse everything back to the downside. We're gonna talk Michael Burry, new insights on Celsius, and also Crypto Weekly Review team has tracked down Suzu. Let's not waste any more time, let's jump straight into the charts. <laughs> it be all sus, yeah. I just doubled up on crypto. I just doubled down on the new vest. Now my chair looking like two checks. Type of money made me want a two step. Who next? This week I be on the moon next. Stop going up like two X. That's a fast flip like suplex. Two really stemming like a duplex. You bet never lose change, but I do flex. Bitcoin on the daily chart continues to be one wild ride. The bulls continue to try to bust out of this ascending triangle, but getting rejected over and over and over again. And yes, this ascending triangle is still valid, even though the wicks are setting higher highs. Look at that four pokes through and then what? Then we dumped back inside the ascending triangle. It is valid because you can see that we are holding both trend lines today. This is a tightening, tightening range. And I would say the bulls are still in control and the bears are still having one heck of a day. This is some bullshit. There is one thing that I did notice that's a little bit concerning. This trend line right here from the all-time high. It does not look good. We could actually get a pump into this trend line. And where would we get to? We'd get to about $28,000. Now, everything is lining up. Remember, there are no certainties. There are only probabilities. But it even lines up with this horizontal support resistance and our Fibonacci pivots. It's something to look out for. We could actually pump into it and then... Twenty-eight K is our R three pivot as well on the daily. We have a lot of work to do to be able to get up here and into this trend line. Like mid September is when we are going to start approaching it. Can we pump into mid September? And what's mid September? That would be the ETH. 2.0 merger now imagine the eth 2.0 merger lining up with that descending trend line looks like it could be a disaster yep that's me you're probably wondering how i ended up in this situation now you do not want to ape in in that be you especially since this trend line is everywhere it's in ethereum at about 2145 which lines up with the daily 200 exponential moving average and taking a look at the s p 500 look at this beautiful rally now the s p 500 is super close to actually touching this trend line at about 43.33 as difficult as this market is climbing up to that trend line and rejecting is extremely probable now jumping straight into PLSD, I claimed my free airdrop, forgot about it. I recently added the custom token and I was like, wow, free money. <laughs> now there is a lot of drama surrounding this coin. I want to ask the Wolfpack, what are your thoughts on this coin? Do you want to follow this coin? Are you bullish on this? Shill it to me in the comment section below or tell me why not, okay? Now guys, Tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, we are going to have another Wolfpack live stream, okay? So let's hit the like button. If you want to see the live stream, make sure I know that there's plenty of interest. Hit that like button, okay? And with that, let's jump straight into the news. You know, so like one of the jokes that people tell each other like when markets turn bad is down bad or down horrendous right and the word that i used to um, describe what happened here is down infinite south korean officials just concluded a one-week raid in the terra luna case 
It seems that they are tightening the circle around Daquan as they have raided seven local exchanges, including eight residences looking for evidence in a fraud case versus Terra Luna. If you were gonna do an investigation and go after the, the top guy, you circle around him and you slowly come in. A lot of people lost their life savings in Terra Luna when the collapse was obvious. When the cracks started to show, everyone shorted it to zero. Now it appears that it has aged Daquan about 20 years. BlackRock comes in, they short Terra Luna to zero, causing a cascading liquidation. Three Arrows Capital, all their creditors, everybody dumps, and then Wall Street comes in and buys the dip. BlackRock hops into Coinbase. Oh, no. Yes, that is how Wall Street works. They take out private independent firms and then the corporations, which are truly wolves, come in and take over. And these Wall Street guys don't really care who is affected. They just want market share, okay? And Daquan might actually go and sit time for this. For what? For a failed financial experiment. This is how cryptocurrency evolves. They projects build on top of failed projects, taking the good things out of them, coalescing into what one day will be a crypto singularity, that one token that is going to dominate the world. What's your take on, I guess, how you define fraud? I fair use these clips out of an interview with Daquan. Check it out. The link will be in the description box below. On a side note, it's funny that a movie about Daquan beat the highest of stakes to market. <laughs> like, I feel bad for Daquan. I honestly don't think he had any ill intentions or maybe even... It was an attack. But as far as Suzu and Kyle Davis at Three Arrows Capital, they bought a $52 million yacht and named it Much Wow. Now that's with investors' money and borrowed money, so it's hard to feel bad about that, especially when both Suzu and Davis's mothers have also filed claims against Three Arrows Capital. Yes, they gambled away their own mother's money. Much Wow is a fitting name because Suzu's mom has to go right back to work in this bear market, just like the rest of us. Now, Suzu and Kyle Davis vaporized a trillion dollars in the crypto market cap. Unlike Jaquan, they are hiding. But the Crypto Weekly Review journalists have caught up with them. We found their Lamborghini Urus in an undisclosed location and got an exclusive interview. Fantastic. I'm here to see Suzu. Hello? That's my face. I was a fat, but no, I'm a not fat. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be you? BitBoy Crypto was called out on his paid shilling by a famous YouTuber with 1.2 million subs. In the defamation lawsuit, BitBoy says he goes through bouts of depression, a fragile emotional state with virtually no confidence. Emotional, damn it! The documents go on to say that BitBoy is a leading industry source of reliable commentary with respect to investments and cryptocurrency. <laughs> All of this is, of course, allegedly. Okay, I don't want to get dragged into this thing, but BitBoy is seeking damages of $75,000. Now, that's a nice chunk of change, especially in a bear market. My personal opinion is it is a bad look and draws more attention to that very good video by Atozi. Okay, it's going to be linked in the description box below. I suggest you watch it because it is absolutely hilarious. And also, please, sir, <laughs> give me an interview, sir. Even though I like BitBoy Crypto, the Wolfpack is riding with the toesy on this one because it's all about free speech. Michael Burry, the man who became famous for shorting the US housing market before the 2008-2009 crisis called the GFC. 
He is bearish once again. He sold all of his stocks, his tech stocks like Google. He sold his energy stocks. He is preparing for the mother of all crashes. Could he be right again? We'll have to wait and see. The one stock that he did not sell is Geo Group, which invests in prisons and mental institutions. Oh, no. Now that sounds like a bag of hex. <laughs> <laughs> but all joking aside, Michael Burry is kind of a perma bear and a meme at this point. He also sold in May. These are quarter two filings, so he completely missed the bear market rally, okay? <laughs> no! 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 He's had some bad calls, so I'm taking it with a grain of salt, but he might be onto something about investing into jail because we are having 87,000 more IRS agents in the pipeline, and this new act will cost the middle class $20 billion in the next 10 years, which is not really that great, to be honest. In fact, I've been calling it the middle class reduction act but however there is still good news we still have all of our cryptos to fight back yeah i'm at the car right now hex on the daily chart has been having one amazing run And even though we are having a little bit of a blow off top here, a clear rejection of the R3 pivot, you cannot deny the pivots. Look at this candle body rejection. Look at this wick rejection, the both, the two of them right there. And even though it's got a pretty healthy dump, it has not even yet touched the 21 exponential moving average. It is still in a daily uptrend now. Whatever side of the coin you are with Richard Hart and some of his antics, you could almost say that this right here is the pole dancing dump. Oh, Live in studio, baby. No! No, no, way. no way! No way! No No way! Now we do have that descending trend line in Hex as well. The price to watch out for, I mean, some, a few daily candles are still going to close. Hex is really close to this trend line, right at about eight cents, I'm guessing, right in that area. We have to watch and pay attention and see if this is going to be a reversal back to the downside, back to new lows. It is possible. Remember, there are no certainties, there are only probabilities okay and speaking of probabilities we're probably gonna have a live stream tomorrow at 7 p.m where we're gonna discuss my next giveaway yes i gave away hex before and i'm planning on doing it again you can go in the telegram chat and vote what you want to receive usdc or hex or eth there is a poll going on okay but anyways guys thank you for watching like and subscribe join the wolf pack and i'll see you on the next one